home in this case is the Yorkshire coastal village of Skinning Grove. It's not the kind of spot even a travel agent would call a seaside jewel. And it makes no apologies. Skinning Grove is iron and steel. And it's home to some 600 people and approximately 2,000 homing pigeons. It doesn't matter where you take these birds, to the softer south or the sun of Spain, Skinning Grove still pulls them straight back like a great iron magnet, home again. It's Saturday afternoon. Back they've come over 300 miles from near Lille in northern France, and Mrs. Louis Rawson is ready and waiting to clock in her family's favourites. Hi there, Robert. Come on, our lad. The Rawson family is well known for its pigeons in this pigeon-crazy corner of England. There's Mrs. Rawson's elder son, Ken, a bricklayer, who carries on the family partnership with his brother, Cecil. There's their uncle George, their father's brother, steel worker and until recently secretary of Skinning Grove Pigeon Club. There's cousin Stan, an ICI worker and breeder of fast long distance birds, what you might call intercontinental ballistic pigeons. His loft next door to the one built and kept for over half a century by grandfather Charles Rawson, founder of the Rawson Pigeon Dynasty. At 88, the oldest pigeon man in Skinning Grove but retired now through poor health. It was grandfather who first went into winning partnership with his son, Charles, killed in a steelworks explosion earlier this year. With him here is his younger son, Cecil, ICI chemist, and the secretary of the East Cleveland Pigeon Federation, the most important pigeon man in this corner of Yorkshire. He's got to do all the checking and cross-checking, the tabulating and counter-tabulating, of the performance of his members' entries. Split seconds count, and the winning factor, the bird's velocity, is counted to three decimal places. If pigeons are a sport to some, they're also an exact branch of mathematics. Exacting, too, this is midnight oil-fired work, being a Federation secretary. Cecil has nine clubs in his pigeon parish. Upward, the various federations on the northern coast come under the powerful Up North Combine, which rules from Yorkshire up to the Scottish border. Why go to so much trouble over a small thing like a pigeon? Well, Mr. Rawson's obviously busy. Perhaps his wife can say. When I met Seth, he, he was a pigeon man then, and he just wouldn't be Seth without pigeons, because... This is part of him, you know. And I think every wife feels this many, many times. And think, you know, you want to go out shopping and they want to go to the loft. Well, you, of course, would like them to be something else but a pigeon man, but they never will be. You can get them to stop going to the loft and stop being a pigeon man for a short while, but they always go back. Even our courting years were all tied up with pigeons. I mean, most of our courting time was spent on front of the pigeon loft. You know, it was... A case of uh, love me, love my pigeons, and that's every pigeon man. And if you don't, well, then you're just left outside. Well, I, I just used to go and have them out for them, you know, and, uh, and clean them out maybe when they were at work and feed them, of course. Get them ready for races, you see. Take them down to the race point to, when, uh, when they were at work to, to go to the races, to be wrong. When we, I used to go down and... Uh, and take pigeons, men used to come and look around and look in basket and they used to say, oh, we have no chance today, Ross, has got the blood blow coughing again. Oh, it was a good bird, was that? It was all blow cocks. It won a lot of races. It was a good bird. Good bird or not, Rawson's blue cock wasn't really a pigeon at all. Like the others, it's really a development of the rock dove, not of the wood pigeon. It's got a long history. The ancient Hebrews even bet on pigeon races. The Rothschild family made its fortune overnight, getting the result of Waterloo by homing pigeon. And Reuters, the first big news agency, used them to fly copy. But it was the Belgians last century who first evolved the modern racing pigeon. And by the 1870s, the sport had reached England. Today, it's spread all over the world, and although wealthy men sometimes pay four figures for a champion, although the Queen keeps racing pigeons... It is primarily a working-class sport. It doesn't have any age barriers, though. 
A pigeon man, they'll tell you, is bred, just as surely as the birds themselves are. Already Cecil Rawson's two young sons, Clifford and Leslie, are being initiated into the mysteries. You know, tell them 13 south, then. Chisbron, Burgess, 536 miles, on the day. So can you see and feel the difference? Well, after, after the strong 500 miles pigeon, but the strength in his shoulders and the power in his back. And if you, if you open his wing out, You'll see the, the strength and the power in its wing with it. They're not too broad, so it's less resistance on the end of the wing. The flight here, it's got all the strength on the flight there and all the strength in its back. It's got the ability to fly far and fly on the day. Well, now, when you're going to go, just lift the leather on your hand and you just fly straight up to the ground. Yeah, there will be about 14 hours. Yeah, you're young and dark. Sure. There they are. Those second nests, you see how it's, how it's got the, already got the little spring in its wing. When you let go of its wing, let that lift it out, it springs back again. See, that's not that the way pop. See, not the way You see the roundness of its head. Tell the difference between the cutwoods and the end birds. Now that one there. The sex life of the racing pigeon is interesting because it has its touches of scandal. Left to their own fences, two pigeons would pair for life. Man, in his quest for a faster strain, upsets this till death us do part relationship and forces the birds into avian adultery, pairing them different years with different partners. Not that the birds seem to mind. Once paired, they're quite contented. They don't seem to have thought of promiscuity for themselves. Former husbands and wives and their swaps mix freely together in the same loft. No jealous fights, no recriminations, just thanks for the memory. They, uh, after ten days, the end bird lays two eggs, and which the parent like bird take uh, turns at sitting on That's the egg. That's the right. The parent birds take turns at sitting on the eggs for seventeen days until they actually the youngsters after seventeen days. The cock birds sit during the day, and the end birds sit on the night side. Which seems one, a fairer division. Grove may be famous for its pigeons, but its real reason for existence is iron and steel. Ore was mined in the valley a hundred years ago. The works turned it into things like railway lines. Grandfather Rawson started steel work here at the turn of the century, having left his previous job because they wouldn't let him keep pigeons. The rest of the family followed, although George is the last. His job's to line the furnaces with brick. While iron ore lasted, Skinning Grove was sitting secure, if not exactly pretty. But today the ores run out. Skinning Grove works is remote, and next year it's due to contract, and some of the two and a half thousand men expect to lose their jobs. If the work's tough and hot, the prospect of unemployment's even worse. So one way or another, it's no wonder the pictures a man may see in the fire spell release. Still works apart, there are a few public buildings in Skinning Grove, on the two chapels, and an institution known as Tim's Coffee House, which is as much a coffee house as I am. Though Tim's is a pub, the pub. It's also the headquarters of the Pigeon Club, and on Friday evenings, before opening time even, the pigeon men and half the village congregate, ready for tomorrow's race. <laughs> but before the birds can be sent on their way, there's an elaborate procedure to be gone through. It's not that anyone dreams for a moment that a fellow pigeon man might be tempted to cheat, but there is a fair bit of money at stake. In a race like this, the winner could get about £50. For topping the up north combine, it would be nearer £500. That's apart from any side bets the man's able to lay. So, first of all, each bird is fitted with a rubber ring, printed with its race number. At the end of the race, this ring is punched into the clock, recording the bird's time of arrival. 69, 65, 49. Here's the new read by Michael de Morgan. On the stroke of six, the club's master clock is set. Then, with 
tension high as at a rocket launch, the members synchronise their individual clocks. Well, that's just an example of how expensive this sport can be. A pigeon clock alone won't give you much change out of 60 quid. It's no use for any other purpose, but every pigeon home should have one. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. All right, all right. Before you go, shavings for next week. If there is none, there'll be no race. There's two blocks volunteered to go, and they ain't been. There's three bags up at the works, just ready to pick up. So what about some volu two couple of volunteers to go, or three? A few years ago, the mass transportation of pigeons was one of the railway's chief functions in life. Today, the Up North Combine does the job itself. It has its own fleet of 14 special pigeon pan technicians and its own team of drivers to get them south or over onto the continent. Oh, well, all that can be done this night's been done. Now they can only wait. Cecil Rawson takes advantage of the lull before his secretarial storm to visit his grandfather in hospital. The chat, inevitably, is about pigeons. And not only chat. He's not a bad one, is he? Is that you born right here? No, we... It's, uh... He's off that one we bought last year. He flew birds for us. He got a good eye, hasn't he? So that's that's like them. That's like them eyes of of your pride, and that. And they're off. Saturday morning, Hatfield, Hertfordshire, and what they rather grandly call the Day of Liberation. Twenty odd thousand northern pigeons get the first sight and smell of the south and decide immediately to head for home, which is 195 miles, 1,000 yards away to be precise. For so seriously is this sport taken that the distance to a yard between every loft and every liberation point has been measured and mapped by a chartered surveyor. Every summer Saturday, year in, year out, the pigeons are flying. In the course of a lifetime, a family like the Rawsons can collect, if not a fortune in prize money, at least a lot of honour. There's not a lot of sentiment in an expensive game like this. If a pigeon doesn't fly too well, it often finishes up ignominiously, but quite tastily, in a pie. Hello, Mrs. Beryl. Sir Rawson here. Uh, will you tell Matt that the pigeons were liberated at 10 o'clock in a light northeast wind? Uh, good morning, Sir Rawson here. Uh, will you tell the uh, pigeons that the pigeons were liberated at 10 o'clock in a light northeast wind? Well, good morning, Pauline. Sir here. Uh, do you mind telling the pigeon fanciers that the pigeons were liberated at 10 o'clock in a light northeast wind? Sir, so, now. On a Saturday afternoon, the valley sides above Skinning Grove seem quiet, but they're alive with eyes. They can be anxious moments, these. All now depends on the strange little direction-finding computer lodged in the feathered brains of the birds themselves. Not all, really. A sudden mist can confuse them. Hawks are partial to pigeon, and some people seem to enjoy shooting them as they pass. No one seems entirely certain how a pigeon finds its way back home. Probably the sun helps. If on a cross-channel race night comes on over water, the birds will drop to a wet roost and drown. But most of them are getting through this time. Up the coast, over the red roofs of Whitby and Staves, where Captain Cook lived as a lad before folk bothered with racing pigeons.
tension builds now as the early flocks are over and away. Each loft has its sentinel now, and if, like Uncle George Rawson, you're on Saturday shift up at the steelworks, then your wife's there to see them in. Work sharing, like the pigeons themselves with their young. And now, after nearly 200 miles, skinning grows, perhaps, but to its pigeons, welcome as the promised land. rubber ring from the pigeon's leg and push it into the clock. And then it's back again with the clocks to Tim's coffee house while the birds rest. Bye. One. Three strikes, once on your printers. Go. More ritual now. Wings and feathers are out. Digits and decimals in. 2839. There's only one pigeon in, as I can see. It's in at 15 hours, 22 minutes, and 38 seconds. <laughs> And for Cecil Rawson, it's the start of yet another round of documentation and calculation, which those who don't know still call pigeon fancy. Yeah. 